Good morning, everyone. I'm Mark Stephenson. I'm the mayor of Maple Grove, and I want to thank each and every one of you for being here this morning. We have another wonderful morning at Rush Creek, and I know we're going to have a wonderful program. So, if you could all join me in prayer. Gracious and living God, this morning we gather as a community for this prayer breakfast. We come together to celebrate our unity of purpose and to acknowledge our dependence on you as the author and giver of life. As the mayor of this city, I want to thank you for all the ways that you have blessed our city, and I pray that we will be worthy recipients of your grace and love. I pray that in business and in industry, in our schools, in our churches, in places of worship, and in the hall of government, your love is for us, will be reflected as we treat one another with dignity and respect. Help us to create a city where justice and peace predominate, so that your will may be done among all the people who live and work in Maple Grove. In your holy name we pray, amen. amen. And now we'll have the presentation of the colors. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Order, arms, left, face, forward, march. We'll now have the litany of praise from Pastor Dirk Peterson, Pastor Peterson. I invite you to grab your program if you would on the back of the program is a litany of praise I'd like to, us to do this today don't be shy and reserved but let's be bold and do this with a little gusto this morning the Lord loves us and calls us Give thanks and praise to God. God moves us to serve our neighbor in need we are blessed with the city and called to serve. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Please be seated. We we'll now have the blessing of the food from Pastor Dale DeMel. Good morning. Good morning. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning to give you honor and praise, for you are worthy of all our praise. Lord, you are the source of all that is good. We thank you for the opportunity to gather together this day, Lord. We also thank you for our leaders. Give them courage, give them wisdom, give them understanding, and may you, Heavenly Father, Give us a wonderful time of conversation and bless the food and all those who work so hard to bring it before us today. In Jesus' mighty name. And everyone said it. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank you, everyone. I, I think we're going to go ahead and uh, get started with the rest of our program here this morning. Well, you have, I know a number of the tables are finishing up eating. But in order for us to be done on time, I think we need to get that going. So it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Brian Schroeder. Brian Schroeder is the Worship and Arts Director for Maple Grove Covenant. And look forward to his musical presentation this morning. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Is everyone feeling nice and full after that breakfast? Uh, it's great to be here. Uh, I'd like to apologize to the people right here where I'm probably very loud and the people <laughs> over there who probably can't hear me. Uh, but it's wonderful to be here. I'm going to play a few songs. The song is called uh, Resurrection. Here we go. Oh, death, where is your 
the strength I hold on to now I'm calling for you And with outstretched arms I will see Thank you so much for having me. Enjoy the rest of your morning. Thank you, Brian. Uh, next, we'll hear from Elizabeth Johnson, the Executive Director of CROSS, for the Community Prayer. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You've had several cups of coffee by now. <laughs> Thank you for the opportunity to be here and to be a part of this prayer event. Um, when I um, hear community, I think family. So families make up our community, and so that's what I'm going to focus our prayer time on. But I just want to give you a little bit of the backstory. Um, when I was asked to do this, I had already been this verse, this very familiar verse. Um, had been kind of brewing in my brain for a couple months. And um, it's Deuteronomy 15.7. It's very familiar. It's one of those places in the Bible where it says, the poor will always be with you. And also be good to them. The poor will always be here. But there was something about this scripture that's just been kind of turning in my head the last couple months. And so when I was asked to do this, um, that was the first thing that came to my mind. So I'm going to share that with you before we pray. Deuteronomy 15, starting with 7, and I'm going to paraphrase all over the place there. So, If there is among you anyone in need, a member of your community in any of your towns, do not be hard-hearted or tight-fisted toward your neighbor. You should rather open your hand widely and give generously enough to meet the need. Give liberally and don't do it grudgingly. There will always be poor among us, since there will never cease to, to, to be some in need on the earth. I therefore command you, open your hand wide to the poor neighbors in your land. If I have learned anything about life, I have learned that it can turn on a dime. One day, you can be that person who is um, hands wide open, generously helping and then the next day you could be that person who's in need there's many families in our community that struggle um, there's many in our community who have the ability to be helpful hands wide open and even in this room today there's many people here who have burdens um, some people know about some others we don't know at all and there's other people here who are just eagerly waiting to hands wide open help others in their community. And so both of us, we all live side by side and from one day to the next, we can be that other person. 
So we have a great privilege today to come together and pray for our community and the families that make up that community. So with this instruction from Deuteronomy, um, please join me in prayer for our community and the families that live in them. <clears throat> Dear loving Father, we come to you first to just thank you for your care and your comfort of us. Thank you that you didn't leave us here without the guidance of how to be in this world. We bring the families, our community that is carrying pain and struggles to you right now. Our community is so full of people who are lonely and people who are broken. We ask you for healing. We ask you to turn families toward you for hope, for comfort, for guidance. We ask that you give our struggling neighbors the courage to reach out for help. Help them to be bold to say that they need help. And then, and then, Father, we ask you to please open up our eyes to see them and to hear them and to respond. For those of us able to bless others able to open our hands wide, help us be courageous in our help. Show us lonely people, hurting people living in our communities that we maybe have not noticed. We ask you to correct us when we start to harden our heart to the needs in our communities, the needs in our neighborhoods, even the needs in our own family. Lord, I ask you to open up our eyes to our community in a way that you have never before and help us to be present where you are. Help us to just stop and just be with you in this community and have your eyes and your heart and your compassion. Thank you so much. Thank you so much incredibly much that you are a perfect father. Give us a view of the families that are struggling and help us to view our blessings in a way that we have not before as well. Help us to be grateful. Help us to be open-handed. Please teach us to do family better in our community. Whether we are a family in need right now or whether we are a family with our hands wide open to help, teach us to live as your family, full of grace, full of forgiveness, full of a readiness to be there with someone who needs our help or just needs a person, just needs a cup of coffee. You are a God of abundance. Teach us to be extravagant in our love and our care for each other. Bless the families, bless this community of Maple Grove. You have done such incredible things here, such incredible churches, such wonderful people and generous businesses. And you have begun such a great work in Maple Grove and in this community. And I ask you to continue that work. I can ask you to bless this community and the families in this community, the businesses in this community, the faith communities in this, in, in this area, Lord, I pray that you would just be with us in a way um, that we can see your hand at work amongst us. And I pray that we would be known as a community that cares for each other. In your son's name we pray. Amen. I thank you for that, and I, Elizabeth, I want to thank you for all you do and all Cross does for our community throughout the year. I know it's a very huge burden, and I want to thank you personally for all you do. Uh, next, we're going to hear from Richard Barr, our speaker. Uh, Richard is a lifelong resident of Minnesota, having grown up in the Twin Cities area. Since 1996, he has been the president and CEO of MGS Machine Corporation. It's located in Maple Grove, and it is a leader in design and the manufacture of automatic packaging machinery, generally for the pharmaceutical and medical device firms. Due to his own life experiences, coupled with a passion for service, 
Richard has been involved with organizations that provide a second chance for those in need. He operates a ministry with his wife, Carla, to call Threshold to New Life. The ministry's mission is to provide both short-term relief to the homeless as well as long-term help to keep them in housing they have. Richard has personally delivered over 20,000 pairs of socks to his friends in the street as a means of meeting the homeless, learning names, and establishing relationships. His ministry works with housing agencies as their backstop to aid in keeping people in the housing they have. Richard co-founded the Food Drive Challenge, now known as the Corporations Feeding America, which provides tools, tips, and techniques for businesses to conduct staff-driven food drives to support their local communities. He serves at and coordinates the volunteers for 2.4 Ministries, which provides a daily breakfast and fellowship in Minneapolis in the Minneapolis homeless shelters. In addition, Richard is a founding member of and has served as president of the Hennepin Technical College Foundation for 16 years. He serves as a mentor to chemically dependent men, volunteers for Habitat for Humanity, and established the Barr Family Endowment with Hennepin Technical College. Richard recently published a book, Amazed, Why the Humanity of Jesus Matters. It's my pleasure to introduce Richard Barr. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You know, somewhere uh, in the middle of God's divine providence and a sense of humor, I, we seem to have a theme today, which, which is just like so awesome as I show up and I look at this, look at this litany of praise and it talks about serving our neighbor in need and then Elizabeth's theme for her prayer uh, about love and compassion for our neighbor. Um, man, it's just, God's kind of awesome, right? So that's cool. Um, so I'll start, I want to start off with a story, uh, and really the theme for today is really about, it's about love and about our response to being loved. So in 1993, uh, there was a young man, Mr. Israel. He was 16 years old, and he was doing what young men do uh, in the evenings on the weekends was he was partying. And he was partying uh, this weekend, and there were some older dudes at this party, and one of the guys' name was Mr. Bird. Um, he was a 20-year-old guy, and they get into this altercation. And as a result of that, uh, Mr. Bird shot and killed, uh, Mr. Israel shot and killed Mr. Bird at this party. And he was tried as an adult, convicted of murder. Uh, Mr. Bird's mother, Mary Johnson, uh, had now lost her only son. And after 12 years of resentment and bitterness, she decided to finally finally go see Mr. Bird at Stillwater Prison. She didn't really have an agenda. She didn't really know what she was even going to say. She didn't know what was going to happen. She just felt compelled to go. So she did. By the time she left after that first meeting, the hatred, the resentment, and the animosity was completely lifted from her, completely. Miraculously, she was restored. And they began to build a relationship and as Mr. Israel served out 17 of his 25 years in, of his sentence, they continued to stay connected and, and, and write letters and talk while he was in prison. And so when Mr. Uh, Mr. Israel was discharged, naturally what he did was he, with, with Ms. Johnson's permission, he moved in next door to her. After all, she doesn't have a son to look out after her any longer. So she calls him son now, actually, this day. She, um, she's proud of him. He's been going to college. She hopes, actually, that he'll marry someday. Uh, she'd like to be a grandmother, of course. It's a, just, it's a great story of love and a response to love. You know, gratitude, giving, and forgiveness. So Mary's heart softened. And as Mr. Israel experienced Mary's heart, his heart softened as well. It's a perfect response to love. So I'm here today because I need to tell you that something, it just absolutely ruined my life nine years ago. I, I had, I got, I'm a planner, so I like had like completely other plans for my life and how I was going to spend my time. My wife Carla and I, we've got uh, four growing children and so we're 
kind of technically empty nesters, except one of them's kind of a, we call him boomerang boy, he kind of comes and goes. But, <laughs> but other than that, other, we, we're kind of like technically close to being empty nesters. So, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a great time to be in life, right? But, but what wrecked my life was that I decided to show up and serve breakfast with a friend of mine once. I showed up once to serve breakfast, and it ruined my life. We'll come back to that. So in my, in my earlier life, I'm somebody who, um, you know, I grew up outside of the Twin Cities out in Buffalo. It was, it was, it was funny. Um, it, those of you that were here last year, Pastor Rich Sherber from um, Adult Teen Challenge was here. So we grew up like, like, like I used to get my drug hookups like on the same street that Rich did, but I'm like, well, we'll just say a couple years younger. We'll just leave it at that. But um, so, I mean, we like, we knew all the same people. We passed through the same areas. The guy that introduced him to, to, uh, to faith is a guy that was a dad, a friend of mine. So we had these great connections. But um, I mean, and I was, I was raised in a family that had uh, a great faith. And I always believed in God. But, and I, and I, and I, I think I believed a lot of the right things about God. But I hadn't really surrendered everything. I really, I really wasn't willing to give God my best. I was willing to... I, I, I wanted the benefits of believing in God. I mean, y'all are some nice people here, you know. So, I mean, I kind of wanted to be like, kind of like you. But I didn't really want to have to, like, give everything up, you know. Complete surrender. I wasn't into that. And so, even though I came through some real challenges as a kid and drug and alcohol addiction and running away and uh, time in Wright County Jail. We were talking about that earlier, right? Wright County Jail. Um even after coming through that, there were still things that I held on to. There was still stuff that I wasn't willing to let go of. And those were things that cost me a marriage, they cost me a lot of money, relationships with my family, and, and peace, really. I mean, they were very, very dark days in my life. So as I came, as God began to restore me and restore my faith, and as I was willing to surrender to him, that's when I had breakfast one day. So a friend of mine started serving a breakfast down at Salvation Army Harbor Light facility, which is down near the Twin Stadium. And I was doing this alone, so I, I put together a small team to pick up one of the days of the week. You see, we, we serve breakfast every single day, 365, for nine years. So we serve about 44,000 meals a year. Uh, grits, oatmeal, it's a simple breakfast, cold cereal, coffee, milk, anything else is donated. We've got over 30 volunteers on seven different teams that each show up one day per week to serve. It's, yeah, it's, re it's remarkable. It is remarkable. So I decided to show up one day to serve. And uh, man, I, I, I just got hooked. And so I showed up another day to serve. And before you know it, I'm coordinating all the volunteers. And, and one of the things that I learned was that God gave me like this really super, maybe it's unique, maybe it's not, I don't know, but he, he, he changed my heart to give me the ability to love the outcast, that he gave me a heart for the downtrodden and people that uh, in most cases are seen as despicable in society. I mean, you know the ones with the, with the cardboard signs and you get a crink in your neck because you're trying to watch the stoplight out of your left eye. Right? I got it. I got it. And by the way, I see I warned him about this. So I see the corded mic here that I was supposed to be wearing. <laughs> All right. All right. Nobody got hurt, right? <laughs> so these people that we that we struggle with, and, it's, and uh, we, we don't know what to do with these people. These people, right? We don't know what to do, how to deal with these people. God gave me the ability to be able to love them and to learn that love isn't conditioned on things I was going to get in return. I learned to not have any expectations in these relationships with these folks. You know, it was an amazing, amazing thing. And, and you know, these are people that couldn't do anything for me. Well, that's what I thought. And that's what I thought. You see, God's developed what I think is the perfect social system. There are the, we've got the haves and we got the have-nots. So I'm telling you right now, if if you paid thirty dollars for this breakfast, it was a good breakfast, right? But thirty bucks, come on. 
you know. I mean, if you pay thirty dollars for this breakfast, you drove a car here, you probably have a place where you receive your mail. It's called your permanent residence, right? Um, you're a have. We're haves, right? And then we've got the have-nots, the people that have needs. And so the social system is this. And so there's this. Uh, there, there was a preacher in the 18th, 19th, 17th century, Jonathan Edwards. And he loved it. He commented on the poor and he preached on them a lot. And he had this, this um, I guess this saying that I, I just gravitate to. And he says this. He says uh, that God is fully self-sufficient. He doesn't need anything that we can give him. So, for instance, he doesn't need me to serve breakfast. I mean, if God's going to serve breakfast at the Salvation Army, I'll bet you he can figure out a different way to do it than me. If that's what God's going to do. So he didn't need me, right? But check this out. So God designated the poor as his receivers of our good gifts. Because he doesn't need what we have. So he says, give it to them. It's a perfect system. You've got the people that have, the people that have not. God matches us up. Because you know what? The people that have plenty, like me, like you, we got needs too. We have needs too. I, so, I'm going to use, since you're all here, I'm going to use this as a confession time because I got some things to get off my chest. So one of the things is, is that, seriously, I have struggled my whole life, my whole life, I have struggled with, and I made a list here, and that way my wife can chime in if I forget some of these things. <laughs> so, I have struggled with pride, ego, anger, sarcasm, self-centeredness, getting things my way, acquisition of material things. I need anything else? Okay. I'll get you yeah. I, I've struggled. I wrestled with those things. Those things are just so deeply ingrained in my character. I have not been a humble person. There are so many things for me to work on. I just feel like I'm doomed from the start. I can't possibly overcome this stuff. And God has had this way with me through sacrificial service. And I'm not talking about showing up at Christmas time in a soup kitchen. Which, by the way, I work in a soup kitchen. And thank you for showing up at Christmas because I mean, we're always glad to have help. Here's the problem. The problem is that you miss the blessing. You miss the blessing. If you show up one time, cool, thank you. Too bad for you. I'm sorry, you missed it. I began to help out with things other than the, uh, than the, you know, the crits. Uh, the mayor mentioned I've given out 20 some thousand pairs of socks, handed them out. Most of the homeless that I know I've met through just handing a pair of socks and asking their name. Um, the, in my, my vehicle's always full of supplies, backpacks, bus cards, bus tokens. In the wintertime, jackets, gloves, hats. Um, we did launch Threshold in New Life four years ago now, um, really to get organized around meeting those needs in a more systematic way. So again, God's providence, God's humor. So funny thing is, is that, you know, we had, my wife had this idea to start this thing. God had like a completely different idea about what we were gonna do with it. So even though we started out with all of these kind of temporal small things, he began to hook us up with housing agencies and shelters and helping us identify where there were gaps with people that uh, they're about to lose their housing. Because here's the thing, if you go through a shelter and you go through a housing agency and you get support to get housing, you are living on the ragged edge. You are living on little or no margin. And anything goes wrong and you are in trouble. And when people get in trouble, they go back to the source of what helped them to begin with. So a lot of times they go back to the agencies, right? They go back to the agencies, they say, I'm in trouble. And they say, gosh, by our charter, we can't actually step back in again. I'm sorry. So we're the backstop. We're the backstop. There's so many people that I talk to in shelters that I ask them the question, it's like, when's the last time you had a key to stick in a lock? And a lot of times it's six months, a year, 18 months. There's a huge churn in the homeless community. Huge churn. And we're stepping in the gap. We're stepping in the middle of that. 
And we started keeping statistics a couple of years ago. And by God's grace and by his provision, we were able to keep in 2015, 54 families from losing their housing. Last year, last year it was 92. 92 people. It's remarkable. You know what it cost? It cost three days in jail. Housing, the Department of Housing and Urban Development published a study in 2012. <coughs> said the average cost of housing homeless persons about $109 a day. So our average grant is about $300. It's a work. It's a work. Beyond that, we've started a vital study in our home. I spend a lot of nights and evenings in shelters and under bridges. I've done some writing. I've got a book out there. If you want to buy a copy, I think it's 10 bucks. All the money goes to support this ministry. Um, so you might ask yourself, Wow. Or you might say, you know, like, cool. I mean, I heard the mayor would like read all of that stuff that you're doing and like, man, you're like wicked awesome. Way to go. And if that's what you think, you missed the point. Because it's not about me. The point isn't about all of these things I've gotten involved in. You need to understand that 10 years ago, I had no idea. I had no idea. What God had in store for me. I showed up to breakfast one day. I just showed up to breakfast. That was it. Mother Teresa, um, she has a lot of great quotes, and so the account of the story that I <clears throat> heard was that um, there was a media person, this was later in her life, <laughs> was um, interviewing her about all the success that she had developing these orphanages in Calcutta and sacrificial service that she'd led uh, through her, her whole life. And he wanted her to comment on that success that she had. And uh, so Holy Mother ponders that and she thinks about that and she says, uh, you know, I think God didn't call me to be successful. I, I think he called me to be faithful. I think he called me to be faithful. Which that one quote like completely shatters like everything I've ever learned. Everything I've ever learned, everything I've been taught, everything I think about as an American. I think about being successful. And it's about being faithful. It's about showing up. It's about listening to what God's speaking into your heart. It's about having the courage to step forward and have breakfast. That's what it's about. It's about being faithful. I love the question. Uh, what do you do? Oh man, are you in for it? <laughs> what do you do? I fly a lot. Um, come on, employees all the time, and so sometimes people get a little chatty. What do you do? Well, so it used to be a vocational response, you know. Well, I do this thing, or whatever. And it's like now it's like, well, I, I do this work thing, and then I do this this you know this whole other thing, whatever. And it's remarkable. So I'll get two ranges of responses. People will either look at me and go, huh, huh, yeah, yeah, good, that's cool, you know. <laughs> or we get in this deep conversation where I've had people like bawling their eyes out, confessing to me about, you know, how they misunderstood who God was their, their whole childhood and stuff. It's unbelievable. What do you do? What do you do? Think about it. Are you willing to serve breakfast? Are you willing to show up for breakfast? God designated people that have needs as his receivers of the gifts that we need to give. So I'm going to challenge you today on this theme. I'm going to challenge you to show up for breakfast. So where's your heart drawn? Is it towards shut-ins, the elderly, single mothers, building houses? Helping across. I'll bet your cross needs volunteers. <laughs> Hello. There you go. And don't just show up at Christmas. I'll do you one better. You can actually, like, literally serve breakfast. Like with me. No, serious. Right. Yeah. So if you want to do that, 
you get a hold of me, I will meet you in the Perkins on Hemlock. What direction would that be? This one? Yeah. I'm getting, everybody's going like this, like nobody knows. I should never ask that question. I just called out all the people that are directly challenging the audience. You can, you can serve breakfast with me. We'll get together, 4.15 in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, start, we'll start preparing at 4.30. Serve at 5.30. 6.30, we're done, we clean up. It's about two and a half hours. The ministry's called 2.4 ministries, by the way. So, which would be like tithing of your time. So there's 24 hours in a day, and if you were gonna give 10% of your time, this is a math problem, people. <laughs> There you go, 2.4 ministry. So it's really about giving back to God, kind of the, our best, about giving back that, that 10%. So it's about love. I mean, do you, experiencing the love that our Father, that God has for us, and to return it with gratitude. He loves us so much, he's set up this system for those that we think we have, and we really have needs to, and the have-nots that have maybe the more clear and obvious needs. It's the perfect system. Do you feel his love? Do you know that you're loved? What are you gonna, how are you gonna respond to that? You wanna have breakfast? Yeah, I think so. So let's pray. Lord God, you first loved us. You loved us enough to give us our lives and the free will to choose. And your desire is for us to choose you, and then you lavish your love on us. Father, help us to feel your love. Help inspire us to return your love to those that you adore and care about so much. Those that are hurting, those that are in need, those that have economic challenges, those that struggle physically, those that are lonely. You said that when we serve those that are the least of these, that we have done so to you. Lord, strengthen us, encourage us, spur us along so that we might love others as you do. Give us your heart, that we might honor you with our lives. And I know sometimes it seems too much for us, too risky, too inconvenient, but God, remove all those barriers or inhibitions so that we might feel free to move into the glorious, life that you have in store for us. God, we're, we're grateful to be part of this fine city. We're grateful for the opportunity to celebrate together today with song, with uh, companionship, fellowship, and this great meal and your message. So we ask now that you go with us as we do your bidding today. We pray this in your name, Jesus. Thank you for our mayor, the planning committee, and everybody that attended. We pray for your blessing upon each one of us. Now, Father, as we leave this place, we pray that you may help us to resolve, to do everything we can and with your help, to make Maple Grove and the Twin Cities a better place to live. We remember the words of that old prophet, Micah, who told us what you require of us to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with you, O oh God. We pray that you may help us to do exactly this. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.
color guard. Hold. Right. Face. Present. Arms. Order. Arms. Prepare to retreat. Retreat. Left. Face. Forward. March. Thank you all for being here this morning and have a great rest of your week and day.